Welcome to Media Minute. For this edition, we're talking about Mortal Kombat, The Vault, The Toll, Cruella, and some of our favorite foreign films. We'll be back right after this. Welcome to Media Minute. I'm Michael Forward. I'm Chris Raskowski. And I'm Rachel Edge. And uh, we're kicking off a new episode, and uh, some new trailers have dropped. Uh, fans of video games... There's going to be another Mortal Kombat. Yeah, about time. Yeah. yeah, about time. What do you think of the trailer? I didn't see Chun Li in it, <laughs> so that's no. disappointing. Oh, don't be. That you know don't start talking. that. <laughs> no, no. They yeah. tried to play that off as if as if it was a joke. Here, here's someone that I'm disappointed that I didn't see though. Johnny Cage. Yes, an actual Mortal Kombat yeah. character. Yeah, an actual Mortal Kombat character. Like, it, how can you do Mortal Kombat without Johnny Cage? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, wasn't um, there rumors that like this actor apparently is going to be like Johnny Cage or something? Like, yeah, they they brought in a character that like you don't really know. Yeah, they're, they're not a established Mortal Kombat character. Uh, some people have rumored that he might be like Scorpion's son or something like that. Hmm. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. I'm I'm definitely going to watch it. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Um, for sure. It looks like they're bringing in like a lot of Scorpion's backstory where like uh, he gets killed by Sub-Zero's clan and everything. So nice. Uh, Should be interesting. Uh, glad to see that on screen. So. Uh, Kung Lao, looks like Kung Lao is in it. Yeah. And he was always my guy. So uh, You're always a Kung Lao yeah, fan? The, yeah. The hat with the razor on it. Yeah. Yeah. Kung Lao was the best. I, I was always Scorpion because he had the easiest finisher. He really did. Block up up. <laughs> I, I still remember that. So I haven't played it in like 30 years, but block up up. Rips the mask off. Yeah. Good to go. Forward down, forward punch was a <laughs> Sub-Zero's. Uh, I think Luke Hangs was just like a like a circle motion. Yeah. <laughs> How do I still remember that? Yeah. Also, Scorpion's, like, his uh, his chain was back, back, B on Super Nintendo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, the Super Nintendo version, they just destroyed because they took all the blood out. Yeah. And just made it, like, sweat. Well, that's what I thought was it's interesting kind of about this trailer, though, is that they are making it, like, an R-rated movie. It's not for kids. It's for, like, yeah. it, they're yeah. going for the fans that played it when it was, like, a bloody game, not... I think you so. Know? I mean, they've been releasing Mortal Kombat games pretty consistently over the past yeah, couple definitely. of uh, years. Yeah, the last one came out, I don't know, just a few years ago. Yeah. Actually, I got one in the mail coming right now. Nice. You actually? So, yeah. Nice. Is it the new one? or? No, I think it's like the second to last. Okay. I'll let you know when it gets here. Yeah, because the new one, like, you can get, like, <laughs> Rambo and the Terminator and... Oh, what? Leatherface, yeah. Freddy Krueger. Uh, they got all sorts of... Like, every, like, fantasy who would win at a fight character, yeah. I, I think they've, they've brought into uh, Mortal... They have the Ninja Turtles. Uh, so it's no, 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 that's, uh, that's another game. Never mind. That's, so it's basically, oh. like, the adult version of Mario Kart. They just put, like, everybody's favorite character and, like, fantasy person kind of in that and was like, okay, have fun. <laughs> Much. I'd go more, more like the adult version of like Smash Brothers. Okay, yeah. true. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm definitely looking forward uh, to this one. Hopefully, they they do it justice because Mortal Kombat has always been kind of the one video game adaption that worked definitely. for me. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, actually, back to a uh, Chun Li. They need to redo Street Fighter. The Street Fighter. Do they need to bring back Van Damme? <laughs> Not Dog in the original. It has its strengths. Well, maybe strengths isn't the Mostly right Mostly M. Bison was the strength of that film. Yeah, Raul Julia. Yeah. That was his last uh, last movie that he did. Gomez Adams, man. Yeah. And he did Gomez it because uh, his kids loved the video game. Oh, that's wholesome. Yeah, he did for it as like a tribute for the kids, the last thing he did. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'd like to um, see... Sorry, go ahead. Didn't they do like a Street Fighter like Legend of Chung Lee like a few years back? I... That sounds familiar. I feel like I've seen it, but I remember nothing about it. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, compared to Mortal Kombat, what was the second one called? Annihilation, I think? Yeah. 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 Where they kill the- off Johnny Cage in, like, the first two seconds. Yeah. 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 No, I that wasn't a fan of that one. Not a high bar to clear. No. <laughs> so, even if it's bad, by comparison, it's probably going to be pretty good. I think so. It looks like they're putting a lot of work into it. And yeah. It's, like, the fight scenes and everything look really cool. So. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I'm going to watch it. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, next up, a uh, trailer came out for something called The Vault. Yeah. Uh, have you guys seen that one? Oh, yeah, I saw yes. the trailer. It was interesting. Yeah. They got uh, Liam Cunningham, which is the guy who played the Onion Knight in um, Game of Thrones. Nice. Um, it's about like a, they're getting like a, a crew together. Uh, it's a bank heist movie. 
but uh, they're getting like a kid who's like an engineer to kind of plan everything. I, that's the hook that they're running it with. And it's like, hey, I'm young. Yeah, yeah basically. <laughs> well, like they yeah. even said in the trailer, like the one girl, because it's Freddie Highmore, I think, playing like the young kid. I don't even know who that is. Re- he's a child actor, like for Sounds a like lot of stuff, is. actually. I wouldn't say for yeah, still is. He looks older now. Like when I first saw him, he was like a Nanny McPhee, and he was like, "Oh, I remember that." Oh yeah, stupid yeah. young. I think it was Nanny McPhee. I could totally be lying to you guys right now, but um, yeah, they even said in like the trailer, like the girl was like, "You have a young kid like watching our back." Like I don't know if I trust this kid, kind of thing. Yeah. Like they play on that. So it, it'll it's be interesting. supposed to be like he's going to approach the heist in a different way than. Like a normal person would, because he's an engineer. Yeah. He's thinking outside the box. Yeah. 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 I think he's they actually a... say that in the trailer. <laughs> really? Yeah, I, oh. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of lukewarm on heist films. Yeah. Anyway. yeah. Uh, like I, I like them generally, but like I'm not. I've never like it's gone like out of my way to yeah. watch a heist film. Yeah. It's yeah. not like you're rushing to the theater to be like, I got to see the next heist. It's like, all right, cool. Yeah. If, if it shows up on Amazon or like Netflix or your streaming platform, and all right, I'll give it a watch. But yeah. Yeah, like I've never gotten excited o- over like the new Oceans movie. Yeah, I don't Same think thing. anybody got excited over the new. Oceans yeah, movie. yeah, probably not. Yeah. Um, also, came out was uh, the trailer for a horror movie called The Toll. Yes, uh, this one looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks I uh, think. looks interesting. I have high hopes. Yeah, uh, they can kind of seem to subvert something because like they, the woman gets into like a an Uber or a cab, yeah, and they supposed to drive to this destination, but the the driver seems sketchy at first in the trailer, but yeah. it seems like they work together. Yeah, like uh, later. I, I totally had like the idea of that wrong. I was like, oh, she's gonna get an Uber. The Uber guy's gonna be really creepy because there's been like obviously true story cases of Uber drivers being super creepy. Yeah. Um. But yeah, and then it's like you get to the point in the trailer where it's like his phone starts shutting off, and it's like, wait a minute, this yeah. is not what I expected at all. Yeah, it's, uh, it looks to be like a slasher type thing, which definitely. Um, I think we mentioned. I don't know if we mentioned on the podcast, but we discussed. Link in the description, by the yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, you know, slashers don't seem to be much of a thing anymore. Yeah, like they they've tried yeah. to bring it back, but I don't think it has the same vibe it used to. Like they did. Um, Death Day, where that girl keeps getting yeah. killed on her birthday over and over again. Oh, yeah. yeah and it's so. like, that one wasn't bad, but it, it didn't have the same effect, I felt. Like, I feel like slasher movies nowadays, it's like, since, you know, Freddy and Jason and all that, it's like, you have high expectations, and now it's like, well, okay, it's yeah. all right. There, there's no, like, uh, uh, intimidating lone killer. Yeah. Um, well, they put out that Halloween movie not too long ago. Yeah, that but was, that was yeah. Halloween, though. It was Michael Myers. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's not, I was talking about, like, new new characters oh in like the brand new slashers yeah, yeah um wow uh whew. maybe the scream franchise is probably the newest one i can think of that kind yeah, of stuck around the 90s. Yeah. yeah yeah but like early 2000s like even now it's like i don't think i can think of any slasher movies that have really been yeah. like whoa this is amazing right like there's been good horror movies but not mm. not slashers no um, yeah it's a shame i yeah. guess it's just one of those things that just got exhausted like zombies I think like so. they were all the rage for a while, and they just kind They're of petered the out. Eh, not so much as they were, like maybe say ten years ago. Yeah, five, yeah true. even five years ago, they were still yeah. pretty hot. Yeah, true. Um, well, Disney has decided to make a movie about another villainess. Dun, dun. <laughs> is, it, is it going to be a warning in front of it? <laughs> I don't Probably. Know. Cruella. Yeah. The villainess from uh, 101 Dalmatians, and yeah. odd, odd choice. Maybe. Um. Yeah. Like I feel like I would have went with. I was gonna say Ursula, but that one's kind of a yeah. basic story. I don't know. Like maybe she was the best choice for the villain. Maybe she she is standout ish. Um. It's one of those things. Like it's it's a prequel though. Like you know what? Yeah. Happens like you, to the character. Yeah. Do yeah. we need a backstory? Or yeah. Like a I I don't know. Origin the, story. The the visuals and stuff look pretty incredible though. Like when she lit her dress on fire and then it turned into another dress. Like I was literally like. Yeah. Wow, like that was cool. But yeah. I don't know, like Emma Stone to me, I I don't see her as a bad she, guy. Yeah, she's not very yeah. threatening. Right? Like you don't look at Emma Stone and think, <laughs> you, oh my God, she's evil. You think, oh, girl next door, like I want to get to know her and grab some beers. Like, yeah. but at the same time. She's threatening you with violence. You just brush her off. And like, hey, yeah, but I don't know. Because there was but... a few shots in the trailer that really, I was like, wait, whole like they had a very joker-esque kind of vibe oh I yeah Big time. I, I think that's right yeah they definitely pulled some vibes from like how they uh 
was it 2019 Joker? Uh, I think. Yeah. Was it 2019? Yeah, it was a couple years so. ago. Yeah. yeah. But even like the color grading. Yeah. And stuff like the way the movie looks. Looks it's, like they just watched the Joker the night before. Yeah. It, it's basically like the Harlequin just, backstory, but Cruella, like Disney's take on it yeah, kind of thing. pretty much, eh? But I don't know. Like, I have high hopes because Emma Stone is a really good actress. Like, I, I love her and everything she's in, but I don't know. I... I'm a, I'm a little yeah. hesitant, you know? But if she could pull it off, then, all right, cool. Like, yep. I'm down. I Definitely a wait and see Definitely. type thing. I think I might be done with Disney. Just, all these r- CG remakes and <sighs> just every, uh, I would love for them to do, good. like, a traditionally animated film. Like, yeah. yeah. The last one they did was The Princess and the Frog. Wow. That was incredible. That, that was, was incredible like, what, film. 2000? Maybe? Yeah, that's maybe 10, 15 years yeah, ago now. Something like that. And everything since has been CGI or remakes of their animated movies. Well, I think yeah. part of the reason they did that, though, is because they saw the success of The Jungle Book, right? Yeah. And it was just like, that made sense, though. You did want the CGI and you wanted the live what? action. When it's like when they did The Lion King, it was a beautifully done movie, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But there were, the, like, it was you just reanimated yeah, it in a, different, in a different sense, right? Yeah. So, uh, no, Disney... No. Speaking Sorry, guys. of hand animation, oh. oh, I'm going to segue. Nice. Segue. Right. We're moving into uh, some of our favorite foreign language films. And yes. Yay. Number one on mine is a hand animated thing <gasps> called Akira from <gasps> 1988. So good. Yeah. Such a good one. Uh, like fantastic visuals. I don't know how else to describe yeah, it. Right? Yeah, like that's when a- you realize that they didn't use computers for any of it. It's it just 500 people working 12 hours a day. Impressive, yeah. A um, couple notes on it. Of course, it was based on a uh, manga that uh, ran for eight years. Apparently, yeah. if Great you read too. the entirety of it, it's over 2,000 pages. Yeah. Uh, and because it's over 2,000 pages, the movie only covered the first half. That so, I mean, sense. we're kind of missing the second half of the animated Akira. Did I doubt we'll ever see it, though, but... Yeah, did they get around to make an... I know there was rumors of a live-action Akira. There was I just, for a while. I think it just ended up in... I think Spielberg in, might like, have been attached to it for a while. I don't. I can't remember. Yeah, it just say. ended up in like production limbo. Yeah, and, you know, there's... That kind of sucks. I mean, it's... It probably would, the movie probably would have sucked. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah. I, I mean, they did um, Ghost in the Shell. Yeah, and that, that pissed off people. Yeah, that uh, that didn't work out, you know. But we'll see. I watched uh, it. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. Um, the movie took place in the far future of 2019. Oh, man. Same year as uh, Blade Runner. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Sudden realization there. Sorry. <laughs> and it was the uh, most expensive animated film, actually anime film of the time. Really? How much was it? I believe it. Uh, 10 million U.S. Wow. But. Yeah, I mean, you can see every oh, dollar yeah. on, on screen. It, it was definitely sure. worth it, for sure. Yeah. But, wow, that's that's crazy. Yeah. All right, who else wants to share one of their favorite foreign language films? Do you want to go first? Do you want me to go sure, first? Sure, I can go. Uh, cool. I brought my movies in. Yeah, I look know, at yeah, like Mr. Overprepared. Graphic. Probably yeah. appearing right here. Audition. He's got the collector's edition as well. He's, got the, he's got the yeah. fancy one. Uh, audition, directed by Takashi Miike. I'm glad you did that because I was worried. I was like, if you don't do a Takashi right. Miike movie, like I don't know. Yeah. If I, I almost <laughs> went all Takashi Miike movies. Fair. <laughs> but I, f- I thought I'd switch it up a little bit. Yeah. But um, yeah, this by all means, or actually by all rights, is a uh, considered a classic. If you basically look up any top ten or top twenty horror movies, this is most likely going to be on there. Uh, it's about a guy, a single guy, his buddy convinces him to hold fake auditions for a movie role but really they're just interviewing girls for uh to be well his his girlfriend really so like the original catfishing before social media was a thing yeah yeah wow. kind of yeah <laughs> and uh they find this girl and man did he make a wrong decision Ooh. Dun, dun. I, 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 I can't talk too much about it because <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of good that's a good, good, uh, yeah. that, that's a good uh, so yeah. cut off yeah so a guy holds audition for girlfriends chooses one doesn't work out no oh um okay quick few notes <laughs> I almost forgot about the notes spent all night working on these no, I <laughs> <laughs> um actually this movie is also, audition is also credited for starting the whole torture porn genre like hostile um so that was a that's a genre yeah absolutely I didn't, I a little subgenre yeah. i had no idea that that was a thing yeah it's like yeah like hostile and saw like this torture porn how no no no, no is not jigsaw that. slasher 
Or he doesn't really. Oh. I don't know. Oh. Hmm. He's iconic. Uh-oh. Yeah, because he, he doesn't really. Because he just makes. He builds. Ah! I swore twice. <laughs> <laughs> beep beep. <laughs> um. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. I yeah. No. Nah. Maybe. I'm gonna go no. But like. He's more of like a. Yeah. A, a slasher is kind genius. of an in, intimidating figure that follows you through the woods. Yeah, but. And or house. You could argue that the. Well, I guess he never really killed them. Yeah, he kind of like left it up to them. Yeah, it was more about like it was about more about like the the human nature of people and stuff. Yeah, okay. okay. So slasher, no, no. Okay. Anyhow, is she a Uh, slasher? Uh, no, but she is a murderer. Oh, okay. Spoiler, I guess. Uh, do you see the like the, yeah, like the, the, the cover front of that? I, well, I thought she was going to give everybody the vaccines. Yeah, yeah. It is. <laughs> the, the second stage of the vaccine. Yep. Oh no! But uh, it was shot in three weeks. Three which, weeks. Yeah, which is actually one week longer than a Takashi Miike normally takes to film. Wow. The dude is a, a workaholic for sure. Yeah. Can you blame? And him I love though? it. Uh, yes. Yeah. Typically, it takes two weeks to shoot a movie. He. Uh, Went above budget and went in a third week. All right. Wow. And uh, I don't think this is giving away too much, but there's a... Okay, I'm just going to go for it. There's a dog bowl full of vomit in one oh. scene that a character... Uh, okay, I'll skip that just in case. <laughs> but um, the main actress, actually... Let your imagination yeah, take yeah, you away. This, <laughs> you, we don't need to describe that. No. It was actually her vomit. She was that much of a, a method actress. She's like, no, I got this. And then I'll just, you know, wow. let the props people have a day off. I'm just going to throw up in that bowl and uh, Respect. call it a day. I guess. Yeah. I'm, I'm, she was dedicated. She yep. was, uh, I think this might have been her first movie, actually. So maybe she was trying to uh, impress above and beyond. Good I don't name. know. I'm sure Mika was just like, yeah, do it. <laughs> I'm all about that. I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest. Like, yeah. that's... I don't know how she did it. Like I don't know if okay. it was just like the fingers down the throat or like she ate something weird. Can we t- or... We're talking too much about puke here. Like okay. I, I think in a dog to... bowl. Okay. So <laughs> I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> all right. That's all I got. You're gonna end on that? Yeah. yeah, yeah there's, absolutely. There's nothing yeah, that, to, like... that's a highlight there. Wow. Okay. How the hell? Supposed to fall? Dang it! There I go again too. Um... Lots of bleeps in this one. <laughs> uh, how am I supposed to follow that? Actually. My my first foreign film, I think, is a very iconic film. Uh, Spike Lee tried to do a remake. Oh, I know where you're and, going. And uh, I, I don't you're think going. it went as well, but it's really hard to follow up. Uh, Old Boy. Yes. It's a South Korean film. Came out in 2003 uh, by Park Chan-wook. I'm so sorry if I said that wrong. I, I'm not good at this. Um, but yeah, the synopsis is basically a man is held captive for no apparent reason for years. He's given a cell phone, um, money, and expensive clothes and is released. Uh, and he has to find out the identity of his captor or else like a worse fate awaits him amazing movie yeah really good movie messed up (laughs) extremely like it's it's one of those movies where like the ending like you know what twist happens it's like okay cool twist but it was like the twist (laughs) of all twists like it was one of those crazy films where you're just like i did not see that coming at all yeah um but actually wildly violent crazy fun (laughs) facts about it uh there's that really epic hallway scene yeah the hammer yeah, they Love actually it. did that in one take. Ooh. Oh, yeah. They, like, that was a single shot, and I didn't realize that before, and then like finding that out, I was like, huge respect. <laughs> like Even more for the film. God, Korean movies are so good. Oh, they're yeah. nuts. They're, they're incredible. Uh, but actually, this one isn't really a fun fact. I felt really bad because um, Daesu, there's a scene where he actually eats oh, yeah, a live yeah, yeah. octopus. Problem is, this guy's a Buddhist and a vegetarian. Ooh. So he actually did it. He didn't get a stunt double to do it, but every yeah. time he did it, which was four times, by the way, there was four live oh, octopuses. I it was three. No, four. Ooh, and uh, he actually like took it, did a little prayer, apologizing, and then ate it. And then afterwards, like he, I guess, went like on a fast for a while because obviously, as a Buddhist, you're not supposed to harm anything. And he felt terrible for it, but I think it was worth the shot. Should have had a yeah. dog bowl beside him. No. Yeah, we're we're up, we're up from that. So no more dog bowls. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it's also based on a Japanese manga, and the ending is actually way different in the manga. Really? Yeah. It, completely different. I guess, hmm. like, like, the director was like, you know what? Let's make this more crazy. <laughs> yeah. They... So, oh, so the ending was more tame in the books? Yeah. Much more much yeah. more tame. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I mean, even... Uh, and there's actually a plagiarized version made in India. Like, shot for shot, 
script, I would everything. Love to see that. Yeah, and I I, check it's that actually out. called Zinda. So if you're ever interested in looking for it, like the filmmakers found out about it, but like they were like, we should sue them, but they actually never got around to it. So yeah. if, <laughs> if, were, if, you really watch, if you watch a film called Zinda, it is literally old boy, but in Indian. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. I thought that was crazy. I had to share that because I was like, what? Nice. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's also streaming on Shutter. Okay. So if, you, yes. if you're looking to watch it, Shudder is the place to go. Yeah, if you got Shudder or Amazon Prime. Uh, nope, just Shudder. Just Shudder. Yep, just Shudder. I couldn't I find a it account. anywhere else. Oh. You should too. So we're you not, can We're get not sponsored by Shudder. No, we're, we're not. not yet. <laughs> we're not sponsored by anyone, so there is opportunity. Just say Raid yeah. Shadow Legends. <laughs> <laughs> so. Looking at you. Yeah, me, me on DC. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Stamps.com. Yeah. yeah. Mike, what about you? What's your uh, next one? We're staying on the uh, Korean Peninsula nice. with yes. uh, Parasite. Yes. It uh, came out in 2019. Uh, it's the first mm-hmm. South Korean film to win an Oscar. Which is crazy. Yeah. Because there is are it? some great... Absolutely. Yeah, there are some great uh, South Korean films uh, out there. Yeah. It was shot in 77 days. Um, wow. They, like it, uh, basically, the synopsis is uh, there's a poor family. And they end up uh, kind of worming their way into working for, like, a rich family. Ooh. And then things go south, like, at, at, at the end. Like, oh. I, I don't want to give too too much away. Yeah. But uh, anyway, the uh, the main set is kind of the rich family's house. They actually built, like, the first floor of that and decked it all out with all sorts of props and everything, including a trash can that is worth uh, $2,300 American because it opens and closes closes without noise because they were trying to like pr- produce this set like to show the opulence of kind of the rich family you know they had things to excess but apparently they had to bring this trash can back though like at the end of shooting because <laughs> they it was, couldn't it was afford over to keep two thousand. oh my god that's amazing <laughs> yeah uh some of the cinematography gives nods to hitchcock uh, nice. there's some shots that kind of mirror what hitchcock used to do and you actually see in a background shot uh a, a hitchcock collection so oh, they're, they're definitely that. giving like a, a nice. nod to hitchcock uh, nice. films and uh, yeah, it was uh, like I said, won an Oscar in twenty nineteen. And I, yeah. I, again, you don't want to give away too too much because uh, it's still fairly fresh. It's only a I couple so. years yeah. years yeah. old, but I haven't seen it. Definitely I worth a watch. Absolutely, it's Actually, been it's been on my list for a while. And uh, did you guys see the, like the interview of the director after he won? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, they're just like, so like, what are you gonna do tonight? He's just like, I'm gonna get very very drunk. <laughs> and I was just like, I appreciate that. Like, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Because we tried to see it. And yeah. Then, uh, I, don't know, I can't remember what happened. I think we just got to, like, maybe went to the wrong theater or something. But we ended up yeah. having to watch uh, Mortal Engines instead. Uh, that was a, it. We we messed up. That's yeah. A, that's that's, I, that's I, dog bowl <laughs> levels of. Uh, <laughs> Is that our new beam dog bowl? Levels? Yeah, that's the yeah. new metric. Yeah. Oh, How many dog bowls full of a net? Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that okay. was that was based on the book series, wasn't it? Like a yes, kid's, it was. Uh, yeah. yeah. yeah but Spe- I'd rather talk about. Speaking of which, I got to segue to something completely different Do for it. a second. Right. Um, uh, have you guys ever read any of the Terry Pratchett stuff, um, Discworld? I can't mm, say I have. No. Yeah, mm. no, he's uh, Pratchett was like a famous English author. He writes like humorous oh, cool. uh, stuff. Okay. He did like I think forty books or something wow. like that. Said in this like Discworld thing, they did a live action series based on one of his books, but uh, called The Watch. Doesn't doesn't quite live up to the the mm. books. Oh, good to know. Never does, does it? No. Yeah. It really well, doesn't. Sometimes maybe. Yeah. Oh. All right. Clips. Uh, who's next? I think it's uh, me. Yeah, I think it's you. Number two. Number two. Mr. I have the physical media Yeah, here. like, I didn't realize we were doing show and tell yeah. today. Bam. Number two is The Raid 2. <laughs> it, Sammy, says, it says brand new. Like, yeah. literally. Yeah. Except there's, I like, stickers, brand new. like, peeled off. Samuel L. Jackson's favorite movie. Here, I rest my case. Wait, what? <laughs> Do I, do I need to say any more? No, not That's really. That's just it? No, amazing action movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, it, the story is pretty, uh, at its core, you've probably kind of already seen this type of movie, you know, undercover cop, taking down some crime families, syndicates, I guess. But uh, the action scenes are amazing. This thing will not stay up. I had it before. You know what? Graphic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, amazing, amazing action scenes. At the bottom here, it says the greatest action film ever. But it's at least in the running. It's funny, uh, there's a, you can look it up on YouTube. There's this one shot, hopefully I can describe it, but uh, there's a fight in a, in a, there's a fight in a car during a car chase, and the camera goes along the one side of the car into the driver's side window, 
out the passenger side window and down to like the passenger side of the car. It's a crazy shot. Well, actually, this whole movie is full of crazy shots. But how they pulled it off was they had the car on like a trailer, and the driver's seat was a guy disguised as a driver's yeah, I, seat. I've seen, I've seen a seen picture that? of that. Yeah. <laughs> so like, they get the camera. He's kind of. Uh, uh, just passes it out the window. It's hilarious. I mean, that's that's like creative filmmaking right there, it though. Is. That's like, how do we do this? Well, let's dress up a guy like a, a driver's seat. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> Honey, what'd you do today? I was a driver's seat. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, super violent. Tons of fun. A uh, bit of a longer movie, which it, it doesn't feel like it. Actually, all the punches and kicks in this movie were real. Oh, wow. Like, Wait, what? Like, they're kicking the crap out of each other. Yeah. Wow. They... Okay. they Practiced, obviously, but yeah, they were uh, they were hitting each other. That's impressive. Body count, three hundred and twenty-seven. Three hundred. Wow. <laughs> that's a Sam that's Jackson's a, most or Sam Jackson's favorite movie. I mean, what movie. higher praise can you get? With yeah, that? like really, yeah. like uh, that's a pretty I, wicked. I, I, could I just stop it? Yeah. Oh, how do I follow? I don't. I should have picked to go first. I don't like following. <laughs> um, so this one actually is a Spanish film. Uh, it's the first of the Batson trilogy. It's actually a book series. Um, based on, or not based on, uh, authored by Dolores Redondo. I should have practiced these names before I even thought <laughs> of trying to say it, but uh, the first one's called The Invisible Guardian, and it's a really interesting story. It has a lot of, like, um, political and, like, mythos and, like, just crazy folklore that, like, turns into this crazy crime scene kind of thing. Um, basically, it follows an FBI agent named Inspector Salazar. She goes back to her hometown to try and solve a murder of a woman that the police uh, force believe is the work of a budding serial killer. So it's got that serial killer vibe. It's got the myths. It got everything. It's a really, really well done movie, too. Um, and, yeah, like, the female characters are awesome. Obviously, Inspector Salazar is, like, the the main character she's wicked and um i couldn't find a lot of fun facts about it but you can watch all three of like the trilogy on netflix which is nice i i watched the first one and i kind of got sucked in and then i looked it's like three in the morning and i'm like i should i should probably go to bed but Hmm. i I really got to start like browsing like the foreign language categories a little bit more oh yeah for sure like i had no idea this movie existed or like the book series existed and then it was like in my you might like and i was like cool let's do it and then watching it the cinematography is beautiful the director did an amazing job the acting was great really really good movie definitely suggest uh, the recommended the recommended list on youtube actually got something right for a change netflix <laughs> yep. oh yeah not, sorry, not youtube <laughs> but yeah you it shows can, what i watch yeah, yeah but you can watch it on netflix which is really nice and you can actually binge the entire series which is definitely worth it because it goes more into like the folklore of like her hometown and like all of that kind of stuff too so oh you watch seven you may like you might like a uh, big daddy <laughs> yeah, like what? <laughs> but yeah, no, definitely worth the watch for sure. Yeah, cool. Um, now my my last film, it, it got it felt it was filmed so long ago that it was filmed in West Germany, not just Germany, but uh, West Germany before the Berlin Wall fell. Whoa, okay. Das Boot. Yes, or the boat, <laughs> formerly known as the boat. For, yeah, formerly known as Das Boot. Yep. Uh, most of the uh, budget was uh, used to like construct the uh, the boats and the sets. Uh, fun fact: most of the actors could speak English, so they just used them for the English dub. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Except for like one guy, I think, and apparently they got him to dub like a little bit later for like a re-release or something like that. Cool. But uh, yeah, if you watch like the uh, non-subtitled version, the voices you hear are actually the the voices of the actors, pretty much. That's cool. Yes, yeah. I like that. Uh, the actors were kept indoors because, uh, you know, it takes place on a submarine. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a movie about a World War II submarine, by the way. <laughs> Probably should start it with that. Uh, but the cast was kept indoors so that they would appear pale. So they, they wouldn't look like they... They, they starved them of sunlight? Yeah, they starved them of sunlight because <laughs> they wanted Damn. it to be authentic. And they also shot the movie in sequence so that they could get the natural beard growth nice oh that's cool appreciate that yeah it's one of the uh, few movies that like is shot in sequence and that one's actually based on a novel as well and uh yeah no it's a fun if you like world war ii style movies if you want to see something from the other side you know it's interesting yeah if you like the the hunt for red october then uh you've probably seen yeah the boat dust boot i mean how many submarine movies are there six yes I can't name them. Six. 
<laughs> we'll take okay. your word for it. There are only six submarine movies. <laughs> we're gonna get it. We're gonna get a com- check. We're yeah. gonna get a comment down below, like in like the comment section. There's gonna be like, guys, you're no. <laughs> yeah. Six. D- Dan Periscope. There's yeah. one. <laughs> uh, Mikhail's Navy. Does Mikhail. that count? Yeah, I think so. Mm. I mm. I don't know why you're looking at me. I don't know any. I'm just looking. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I got nothing. I can't tell you. <laughs> I'm sure there's more. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. No, there's just six. Nice. Yeah. Anyhow, anyhow, so you're saying? You're up. Oh, it's me. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> right. All right. My last pick. House. Japanese movie? Yes. Really, really, not to be confused with the American House, which is also a pretty good movie. Loved it as a kid. Uh, yeah. Kind of hard to describe this one because it's so insanely weird. I, I've read the back cover and... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and maybe I'll just like, give you like a couple sentences. Yeah, yeah, I won't read the whole snippets. thing. Not the whole thing. <clears throat> All right. Figaro, Figaro. Here we go. Get the character. <laughs> yep. Oh, God. How to describe Nabuhiko Obayashi's in indescribable, you see my problem, 1977 movie House. As a psychedelic ghost tale, a stream of consciousness, a stream of consciousness bedtime story, an episode of Scooby Doo as directed by Mario Baba. Italian horror movie director. Yeah, it's it is weird, trippy. Um, basically, it's about uh, I think seven girls. I can't remember. I think so. Uh, they just go to a house, and the house basically just kills them in the most strange and surreal ways. Yeah, like it's yeah, it sounds surreal. It, it oh, it's weird. If, uh, the weird thing is like it is like crazy weird, but really watchable. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, like it's 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 still really entertaining. Um, it was the director was actually just a he directed a commercials in Japan, and then his twelve year old daughter basically wrote this movie. Like it was her idea. Oh, I thought you were going to say she was eaten by a house. No, <laughs> no but if you are Wild looking <laughs> for if you if you find yourself looking for a movie where a girl gets eaten by a piano. I forgot about that scene. Look no further. <laughs> I, I, I definitely scene. have to watch this at some you, point. You do. <laughs> Here, I'll just give it to you right now. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. I'll rest my case. You Next. forgot one of the most important parts of that. What? He wanted House to be as big as Jaws. That's the whole reason he oh, did the movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he saw Jaws, that. and he's like, Japan needs a Jaws movie. And so they did House. This has nothing. So the house is underwater? Nothing no. to do <laughs> with Jaws at all. No, nothing. But he wanted something of like the yeah, same yeah, popularity. Like he a wanted scary the, blockbuster. He's like, he we need, he's like, Japan needs one of those, and thinking? that movie was created. I don't know if the cameras will pick up on it. Oh, it's a, it's a release by Criterion, so you know you're in for a treat, because they don't put out bad stuff. No. Yeah, there's no real pictures in here that the camera would pick up on. But, yeah, if you want to see something weird, very weird, but really entertaining at the same time. House. Yeah, I didn't mess up the focus. You sound like the guy in the trailer that was, like, who did, like, the whole thing when it was, like, house. house. So, yeah. Yeah, watch it, if you can find it. Mike has my copy. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay, yeah, so my last film is uh, another Korean film, and it is Train to Busan. Oh, okay. And uh, I found out a lot of interesting things about this. If anybody like doesn't know what it is, basically, um, the main character and his daughter are on a train to Busan. Really? Yeah, it's weird. Um, and he's trying to get there for a uh, birthday to see his wife. And however, the tr- like the journey turns into a nightmare when all of a sudden a zombie breakout happens Zombies. on the train. And honestly, there's a lot of things about this movie that I didn't realize. Uh, this was the director's first live action film. He's been in doing animation his entire career and he saw this, he's like, I wanna make this film. Yeah. So, and it was, it took under four months to film. And um, it was the sixth highest grossing domestic, domestic film in South Korea and it's the first ever South Korean zombie movie to ever be made. What? Really? Yep. Dead serious. I was like, you think they would have picked up on that like earlier, but. Right? But yeah. like, Crazy. It, and the fact that it came out in 2017 too, I was just like, it took them, that long to make a to make a zombie movie yeah, but like weird. i guess like whatever they were doing they were they were doing great and it became like the most popular film in south korea for like months yeah that movie is big yeah that movie is massive I'm, and that one's also on netflix so you can watch it there yeah. and yeah, there's but, an animated kind of follow-up spin-off too also yes. on netflix um apparently it's part of a series this is like the second part to oh no i shouldn't i should know this 
I can't remember, but there's like a there's a series that was apparently supposed to happen with this one. There's it was supposed to be like the sequel to a prequel of some sort. I I couldn't find more information yeah, on it, sequel but sequel to a prequel. Yeah, it was a weird it was a weird thing. But yeah, like a lot of people really like the you film from what I've brain. seen. I really enjoy um, enjoyed it, and you get really attached to the characters. I found. Like the main guy, I was like rooting for him the entire time. That's that's a big thing with like horror films. Yeah. Like sometimes they give you this huge cast of characters and you don't care at all. Yeah, <laughs> like, all right, can't like, wait to see oh, how you die. Oh, there's six guys. Oh, the mouthy guy is gonna get killed first. Yeah. Surprise! Yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, like watching it though, it's like every one of the characters you were introduced to and was like kind of in like was like invited to get to know throughout the movie. It was like, oh man, like I don't want anything bad to happen to these people. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, really good movie. Definitely suggest the watch. Excellent. Cool. Yeah. Um, How are we doing for time? Do we have time for guilty pleasures? Yeah, well, I think we got time for guilty pleasures. Tonight on Red Shoe Diaries. Yes. And now a very Showpiece. special media minute. Should we turn down the lights? <laughs> Rachel's laughing <laughs> because she has to edit this at some point. Yeah. <laughs> All I'm going to hear is sweet whispers. Yep. Yes. Well, right. my first guilty pleasure... <laughs> is a Kevin Costner film. Oh, I love Kevin Costner. Called The Postman. Nice. Everybody hates this film. Except I don't. For me. <laughs> it is such a delicious film. Oh, can you please stop? <laughs> I think I'm stuck. <laughs> okay. Yeah, switch, okay. Yeah, uh, Kevin Costner, um, it was kind of his second like post-apocalyptic film that came out like after Waterworld. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, he yeah. had like two post-apocalyptic flops, like oh, one man. right after the other. But I'm, uh, you, you know, we're calling this guilty pleasures, but, you know, post-apocalyptic stuff, I like. Same. And yeah, same. Uh, I think, like, I haven't seen it in a few years, so maybe it doesn't hold up at all. <laughs> but uh, I remember liking it uh, last time I saw it. I think I think it's a bit long. I think it's like two hours or something like that. Something like that, yeah. yeah. And I think Tom Petty's in it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, I think he plays him. I, I could be getting, like, the wrong singer. But there's a actor. Uh, he plays like the head of like this uh, community or whatever. I'm pretty sure it's Petty though. I'm looking this up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you gotta know. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll be right back. Yeah, right. but uh, if you go online, you watch like any like movie review site or anything like that talks about the Postman. No, <laughs> people do not like this film except for me. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm the only like Kevin. You, you did okay with, <laughs> with if the you're post watching. Yeah. Oh, but three hours long, holy! Yeah, it's I, a three hour long. Yeah, movie? I remember it being beefy. <laughs> wow. But uh, yeah, no, that is. Uh, I, should, I should go back and actually, actually watch it. I've, I've made attempts to find it online, but I don't think there's any streaming service. <laughs> and scrub from the internet. Yeah, might have to be one of those. Uh, those YouTube checkouts, maybe, because like I've, I've noticed, you could find some of your like old nostalgic movies like yeah. on YouTube. I, Sometimes yeah. I've actually been finding like old sci-fi movies yeah. on YouTube. Someone just like completely uploads them. You're like, and, hey, I, lo- uh, I like this film. I feel like other people probably would like this yeah. film. Tom Petty was in it, oh, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Nice. Just checked. That's wicked. <laughs> I didn't know he did that. Yeah, he's only in for like a, a couple scenes. And just and d- deliver some mail. T- he, checks out. Pretty much. <laughs> All right, uh, Rachel, who you got, or what do you have? See, I did three because I thought we were doing three. Three. I she have, hates everything she watches. I don't hate everything <laughs> I watch. It's just I don't have good taste in movies apparently. Because every time I'm like, oh, I love this movie, I'll look at the reviews and all of them are terrible, and I'm like, oh. all of it's dog bowl. <laughs> yeah, literally. Dog bowl. Um, but like this one actually did good in the box office, so I think I'll talk about this one, and that's Pirates of the Caribbean and the Curse of the Black Pearl. Oh, love that movie. I thought. Is that a guilty pleasure though? I think I thought it was a really popular movie. See, I looked on the like, uh, like I had, Wait, oh, sorry, which one is that one? That's the first one. Yeah. Okay, that's the two thousand three one. Okay. Like the introduction to. Yeah, that's that, wildly popular. The Disney pirate universe. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's crazy because like they were really worried it wasn't going to go well. well. Like it's based like everyone was like it's based on a ride. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, they, How are you going to make a sh- movie based on a ride? That's exactly what they were worried about. Like yeah. Michael Eisner, like the guy who was running Disney at the time, he almost pulled the plug on it and then it ended uh, up being like one of their most successful film franchises like to oh, date. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But I found out some really crazy things. Um, Jack Sparrow was not supposed to be Johnny Depp. No? At oh, all. yeah. Uh, they weird. actually wrote, the writer wrote the role in mind for Hugh Jackman. Hmm. hmm. I'd be okay with that. Not yeah. just that, but other actors that were considered: <laughs> Matthew McConaughey, 
I do that one too. Bill Murray. I don't know. Okay. Uh, Robin Williams. Nope. And Christopher Walken. Mm, I'd cast him in it. I would, I would love to see a Christopher <laughs> Walken would, Pirates as, right? movie. as Jack Sparrow. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, right. All but yes. I, don't, I don't know, because like, thinking Her about yes. it now, though, it's like, I can't picture anybody else as Jack Sparrow. Like, I'm I picturing Christopher picture. Walken right now, and I'm having a great time. I feel like it would have been <laughs> wicked, but like that was when, because like, this movie was in development from, like I think, 90s until like, yeah. the 2000s. I actually yeah. read something on that recently, because yeah. um, uh, Disney acquired... Um, Lucasfilm. Yes. Um, but originally there were some talks of like a, uh, there was a video game that came out in the early, late 80s, early 90s called Secret of Monkey Island, which is about oh, pirates yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I remember the game. And I, apparently from what I read, some of the preliminary work on that film that never materialized might have worked its way into the script yep. for uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Yep, definitely. Yeah. It's crazy because it's like a lot of the stuff in the film, like, some of it was uh, improv like two of the most famous lines of Jack Sparrow was improv by Johnny Depp he just like sat there and he just said it and then they were like oh dang that was good like yeah yeah, they were like we're keeping that in so and that was savvy like every time he said savvy that wasn't in the line he kind of was like this is what Jack Sparrow would say so I'm gonna say it and then uh, the very end of the movie when he says bring me the horizon that was his line as well it wasn't in the writers and I was just like (laughs) it's weird to think that pretty inspired right isn't that a band Um, Actually, uh, another crazy fact. I found a lot of information about this. So, Karen, Karen Knightley was only 17 mm-hmm. when this film, film was made. Like, really? she, she wow. was the youngest actor on there, and she actually thought she was going to get fired. So, she packed the least amount of clothing she could because she was, like, convinced that, like, her experience, yeah. like, was just she wasn't going to go. Hmm. And it wasn't going to work. But obviously, proved to be wrong, and she actually had to bring her mom to set <laughs> because she was too young to be by herself. Has she been in much recently? Uh, Pride and Prejudice. Okay. Prejud- Prejudice? I Prejudice? can't say it. Um, a lot of, like, really, like... Uh, Big time period. Yeah, Victor- time, Victorian, yeah Victorian pieces. Yeah. Um, another really cool thing that I found out about the film was that uh, during filming, uh, Johnny Depp actually got a letter from a girl asking to run a mutiny against her school. <laughs> he didn't give the school any time. He just showed up. <laughs> Like, Incoming Depp. Yeah, yeah. They were, he was just showed up, full out like costume, and he actually like ran the mutiny against the school for <laughs> nice. them. And I was just like, that's wholesome. Yeah. And he, like he actually like very often dresses up as Jack Sparrow and goes to hospitals and visits kids and stuff. So I'm just like, oh. Yeah. But any yeah. actor that you hear that like doing that, it's like yeah, yeah, it's great. Hollywood, you're doing Johnny Depp dirty, and you know it. Yeah. Yeah. But calling you. I won't lie, like. After I watched Pirates of the Caribbean, I actually like rewatched it like I think about a hundred times to the point where <laughs> I actually had the mannerisms down of Jack Sparrow. <laughs> I actually dressed up as like a female Jack Sparrow. Like I was obsessed with, Jack <laughs> with Sparrow. Jack Sparrow. Literally, yeah. yeah. I nice. have pictures of it somewhere, but those will never see the light of day. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Stay but, tuned. Yeah, so that's one movie I can definitely watch over and over again. That's my guilty pleasure for sure. Cool. My go ahead. Yep. I only have one, but I think it it probably counts as three. <laughs> Howard the Duck. Yes. Yeah. Howard <laughs> the Duck. The original Marvel movie. <laughs> yes. I honestly, genuinely loved that movie when I was a kid. In fairness, I was a kid, so I didn't know any better. <laughs> okay, but you could still watch it now and enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, it's still good. I, I rewatched it actually not too long ago. I forgot there was a sex scene in it. Oh. Between Howard the Duck and the main character and man that's a weird movie yeah <laughs> especially if you know anything about duck and anime yeah but, oh god uh, <laughs> but anyhow fun fact let's get <laughs> let's get some fun yeah. facts yeah uh george lucas was uh, in the midst of building skywalker ranch and howard the duck was supposed to help pay for it oops <laughs> no <laughs> that didn't go well hit well the movie bombed obviously but uh because of uh george lucas's i guess uh financial missteps uh, Steve Jobs bought the CGI division that eventually became Pixar yep what so if Howard the Duck had not had it not failed so famously we might not have Pixar yep or at least not in, in its, its current form yeah that's really the only yeah. interesting fact I could Rachel's find out about. Broken. Uh, yeah, you just broke my brain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's so crazy. You can hate on Howard the Duck all you want, but if you like Pixar, then you got to give it a little love. Accidental. That's nuts. That's... Even if it is not on purpose. 
That's cool. Yeah. That makes and, my heart uh, happy. It was supposed to be directed by John Landis. Oh. As of like Blues Brothers, uh, Three Amigos, Coming to America fame. No yep. way. But that fell through. Crazy. So, her- so did the box office. <laughs> yeah. yeah no kidding. <laughs> they dog bowled it pretty hard. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. We, 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 we've made a verb. It's yeah. <laughs> a new thing, man. Yeah. Well, I think that wraps up this edition of uh, Media Minutes. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that like button, hit the bell, hit whatever you need to hit. Subscribe. So we can bell. bring you more uh, episodes. Coming up on the next edition, we're checking in with our favorite Cage, yes. Nicholas yes. Cage. And we're going to talk about Willie's Wonderland. So stay tuned for that. Oh, yeah. I'm Michael Forward. I'm someone who likes Howard the Duck. <laughs> That's it? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm Rachel <I> Edge. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bring me the horizon. <laughs>